Okay, we're going to be looking at um, um, balance of payments now, and that involves uh, uh, something that's called uh, double entry bookkeeping, which uh, actually is very old. It dates from the 15th century. So we're going, in effect, back to uh, the, 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 the history of economics. At the time of Adam Smith, he understood balance of payments. So this is one of the, in fact, it's one of the oldest parts of economics, even though it's considered part of, nowadays, part of macroeconomics. Double entry bookkeeping, um, the, uh, it was a, an Italian monk, who's known, known as Pacciolo, uh, um, he dis discovered it, wrote a book about it, uh, and is famous for it. But I think really he was taking his ideas from uh, another Italian monk, Fibonacci, who probably copied it from uh, from India. And the, and the reason for this, it involves the notion of zero. And uh, for example, the Romans, ancient Romans, they, they had no concept of zero, which is kind of interesting because it means that they probably weren't able to really run a business very well. Double entry bookkeeping is the basis of any, uh, any successful business. Business. This was the basis of modern accounting. Uh, and th the key idea here uh, is that uh, every, every transaction gets recorded twice. That means there's two ways to record it. And if you think about it, it's rather logical because in any conversation, there's two people. In any transaction, the buy and sell something, of course, there's going to be a buyer and a seller. So let's take a look at this and see uh, what it means in practice. Uh, consider, uh, for example, a, a corner store, a dependent. And uh, there's always a bell at the door. And so as a result, the bell always rings twice. Well, why is that? Why does the bell always ring twice? So if you think about it, there's going to be people that come in and then people go out. Well, that makes sense, except I want to put emphasis on something more. Money comes in and stuff goes out. So it is true. People come in, they don't buy anything, then they leave. But it, we're looking at when a transaction occurs. And so uh, money comes in, stuff goes out, I don't know, chocolate bars or whatever. And, and of course, there has to be delivery. So I don't know, the Molson beer truck shows up typically in the morning, beer comes in, and then, well, there has to be payment, either an invoice or some kind of paper, financial paper, something indicating that the, the, the for all anyone in Montreal, maybe actual cash goes out. Um, and we might sort of stop and think, well, what happens if somebody steals something? So somebody comes into the day and they just walk out and they don't pay for it. And it happens. Uh, but in this case, uh, accountants like this idea of double entry bookkeeping so much that even in the case of something like theft, they still record it twice, even though they know there's no other second thing. And they have a special account for it. It's called, you know, theft, wastage, loss or something. So, OK, I want to make uh, two points about this uh, system of double entry bookkeeping. And the first point is, and this was the way Pacciolo did it 500 years ago, uh, which in some ways is a mistake. It's unfortunate it was done this way, but we're stuck with it now. We can't change it. Anything leaving or going out is recorded as a plus and anything coming in is recorded as a minus. The logic here is when you add the two things together, you get zero. It's kind of illogical though, because you think about it, something going out, that should be a minus and something coming in should be a plus, but that's not the way it's done. It's not the way the economists do it. It's not the way accountants do it. So we're stuck with the system that we've got right now. So let's consider a transaction involving a Canadian and a foreigner. So we've got a, a Japanese tourist who's, uh, I don't know, in Vancouver at the airport, duty free, wants to take back some maple syrup to Canada or to Japan, rather. So he uh, he gets on the plane, flies back to Tokyo, and he's taking out with him the maple syrup. So usually one of these things, you can usually get one quite easily. The second one is a little bit sometimes more difficult. But how would we record this in Canada's balance of payments? Keep in mind, the border of Canada now is like the day banner, is like the, the, the bell that rings the door. So we're going to have the maple syrup going out. That's a plus. And then, of course, he has to make some kind of payment. Imagine the guy pays with uh, with Japanese yen or I don't know, some other, maybe pays with his credit card. It'd be credit card slip. But in any event, the yen comes into Canada. That's a minus. Add the two together, you get zero. Let's consider the second point I want to make about these system of balance of payments is that uh, while this is recorded on the balance of payments, there's different categories or accounts where things are recorded. And in fact, that gets rather complex uh, in, in the case of accounting. Uh, I'm going to keep this really, really simple and just say there are two because there are two main accounts within the balance of payments. One is called the current account, and that's for anything that's like a thing like a, a real stuff you know like goods or services and another account called the capital account which records financial paper so let me say anything coming into canada 
uh, like a real thing, uh, good or simple, be recorded under the current account as a minus. And when Canada sends something real abroad outside of Canada, then it's a plus under the current account. If it's financial paper, money comes into the country, that's recorded as a minus. And anything leaving the country, uh, financial paper leaving Canada, it's recorded under the capital account as a plus. Keep in mind, too, that every single transaction is recorded, uh, is, is, are going to be opposite in signs. They're equal. I haven't been putting in the actual values here, but you could do that. And then Statistics Canada actually does. And for accountants, that's very important. So that they both add up to zero, which means also at the end of the year, if we looked at the total for the current account, and the total for the capital account, it too would have to equal zero. So another way of viewing this is the balance of payments by definition must sum to zero. Okay, so let's consider a transaction. We've got a Canadian that buys, for example, a Volkswagen. Let's assume it's made in Germany. So what happens? The German car comes into Canada, and presumably we have to send some kind of payment or money or some kind of financial paper to the, to, they're not gonna send us a car for free, to the, to the Germans. So how would this be recorded in Canada's balance of payments? Well, under the current account, we would have the car coming into Canada, it's a minus, and under the capital account, because the payment goes out, some kind of financial paper, it would be recorded as a plus. Add it together, you get zero. Let's consider another transaction. The Canadian is in, I don't know, New York City at the airport, LaGuardia, and uh, goes into one of the, like, the food court section, has a, I don't know, a club sandwich, and pays, just for the sake of argument, with the BMO credit card. And then the person, Canadian, gets on a plane, flies back to Montreal. So how would we record this in, uh, in Canada's balance of payments? Well, on the current account, the person would be bringing into Canada a partially digested sandwich in the person's stomach, uh, and that would be a minus because we're bringing something like a good or service into Canada, like stuff into Canada. On the other hand, on the capital account, we would record the credit card slip, which in effect left Canada, and uh, that's what they left for the payment. So that would be recorded under the capital account as a plus. The BMO credit card slip is leaving the country. The two added together would be zero. And again, in Statistics Canada, they would record it as not just simply a minus sandwich coming in, it'd be minus $10 club sandwich, and then plus $10 credit cards left going out. I'm gonna ignore the numbers here because I'm more concerned about the idea of a plus and minus and the basic principle of balance of payments. So let's consider another example. Quebec government sells bonds in Europe. So I don't know, the Prime Minister of Quebec, uh, François Legault, uh, prints up a bunch of government bonds, puts them in his briefcase and flies off to Frankfurt. And uh, uh, he, he sells them, I don't know, on a sidewalk in front of some bank someplace. He sells them to Europeans. And in exchange, he's going to receive euros. So how would we record this? And then he flies back to Canada uh, with, with this uh, briefcase stuff with cash. Now, how would we record this in Canada's balance of payments? Well, on the current account, there'd be nothing because all that's really happening is financial paper goes out, financial paper comes in. So we'd have the Quebec government bonds going out of Canada under the capital account as a plus, and then the euros that he brings back uh, would be recorded also under the capital account. So be careful about this. Sometimes everything's recorded under one, sometimes they're opposite, something, but in all cases, you have to have a plus and a minus. So I, I don't think he really brings euros back into Canada any more than I don't think he sells these things on the sidewalk. Uh, more likely what he'd be bringing back into Canada would be a bank state statement on behalf of the government of, of Quebec. And, and by the way, the Quebec government does things like this. Why? I wants to have uh, bank accounts in euros for a variety of reasons. So let's consider another possibility here. Let's say, for example, Bill Gates flies into Montreal. I've noticed I've, I've changed a little bit the presentation just to make it closer to the way the accountants do this. It makes it a bit easier to keep things, keep, keep things straight. Uh, Bill Gates flies into Montreal, the airport, uh, the airport at uh, Trudeau, and uh, uh, I don't know, gets in his limo and drives around to Dorval, sees one of those warehouses, and says, yeah, it'd be great for Microsoft. Uh, he uh, hands over a, 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 a suitcase full of US dollars and then gets on his plane and flies back to uh, Seattle. So how would we record this in Canada's balance of payments? Well, we would definitely see the US dollars, the cash coming in. So that's gonna be a minus for the US dollars coming into, uh, into Canada. Not very good at writing on the on the on the board here. So this is the U.S. coming into Canada. Now he can't take the warehouse when he goes back to the United States, so that stays here. But he will take back something that's called a deed. That's like a piece of paper that says um, uh, the deed 
goes out. It's a piece of paper that says, it's financial paper, that says the person that has this paper is the holder uh, or the owner of the piece of land and is entitled to any benefits from, from the use of the land. So what we've got is US dollars coming into Canada, a minus, the deed, financial paper goes out, both transactions are on the capital account. And uh, consider another example. If you've ever driven down to Florida, it's kind of fun in the winter time. Uh, you 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 leave here; it's freezing cold. Then you get to Florida. When you cross the border from Georgia into uh, into Florida, they've got these welcome like tourist information centers, uh, and and they also this is Florida. They hand out free orange juice. It's kind of fun. You stop in the car, and it's like nice weather, and then you get some free orange juice. Anyway, I did this a couple of years ago, and I did it a second year. And the second time I drove to uh, to Florida, I remembered that they were going to give us free orange juice. So uh, I think they also give grapefruit juice. In, in any event, before leaving Canada, I took some maple maple syrup, exactly maple fudge. So when I crossed the border to Florida, went up to the tourist information people, they gave me this orange juice. And then I said to them, I'm from Canada. Here's some maple fudge. Of course, uh, foreigners don't know anything about maple syrup. Most, I shouldn't say nothing, but it's, they, frequently they don't. So the woman was very intrigued by this. And then she... She took it, everybody likes it, it's nice. So how would we record this transaction in Canada's balance of payments? Well, first one we've got is a plus for the maple syrup goes out. Uh, that goes out. Now, what do we see coming out? I have two. We gotta have a minus for something coming in. Well, that's the orange juice, except let's be honest here. By the time I got back to Canada, the orange juice was long gone, but it's still recorded in the capital account as, well, I, I can't really call it, let's call it the memories of orange juice, memories of Tampa Bay. That's like the president's choice version of orange juice come in to Canada. So in this case, both are recorded on the current account. Let's, we'll try some more examples in another video. Thank you.